This video is sponsored by Casetify. More on that later. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the drama. I didn't get a lot of sleep last night, so energy is just a notch lower. But I think it's about to pick up in a second right now. Listen up. Let me do my little video essay intro. With the rise of social media stars online and the option for everybody and anybody is it anybody and everybody to have online influence? Now more than ever, we have this extremely diverse set of characters that you can find in every corner of the internet. And because anybody can be an influencer and it's not most people's full-time job, the line between your real life and your life on social media, that can get very blurry. People can separate their real life from who they are online as much as they want but to a certain extent it feels like the privacy of your own life is out in the hands of a bunch of random people online i mean yesterday in the queef jerky video we put out i like confirmed that i was in a relationship in that video and luckily i have a very respectful and genuine audience who never made me feel like i was forced to talk about that part of my life made me feel like pressured to say something about it in some big way. I knew that people who are familiar with my content would treat me in that way. And that's a great thing to know. It makes me feel very safe about keeping my private life as private as I need it to be. But when your audience gets to a certain size, do you really have control over any of that stuff at all? I guess that's what our story is about today because a massive TikTok creator on the platform is now being talked about all over the internet because of some really sad and unfortunate circumstances. So let's talk about that. And don't forget to watch the Queef Jerky video. It's really funny. I had a fun time making it. I think you'll get a goof and a laugh out of it. And I walked back in the room to hear Ethan just screaming at the top of his lungs. And he was doing this amazing hook that he came up with. Uh, pineapple upside down, yeah. In the toilet, I make a brown, yeah. It's kind of based on a true story. Now on to the news. <laughs> this TikTok creator by the name of Ashley Elliott it has 14.6 million followers. And the reason I bring up that original intro that I just talked about is because I had no idea that this person was on the internet. Most of you probably do, but... If you don't, let's talk about why she became this famous in the first place. And that is because she is known as the, the hair gel queen, I think. The gel queen. Where should I put she is known for gelling her hair back like they do in the, in the military, I think. Listen, I'm not super familiar, but I think because the boys have to shave their heads, the rule for the girls, at least, they have to slick back their hair because you don't want to throw a grenade and, and it, it gets stuck on your hair strands you don't want to reload your gun and your hair gets stuck in the clip guys please we can't have that happen i'm just kidding i know it's just some formal whatever but she slathers that gel on that's why she's the gel queen i mean watch this shoes, she actually sells her own combat gel now but i, mean, I listen this is 34 million views So, so I guess her whole hair, thing I is that put a little bit too much gel, so we're gonna take it off right now. I don't know how that happened. But I think this is like basically what the TikToks are like. She shows her process, really getting that bun down, really making it so she has nothing, no grenades, no magazines are getting caught on on any pieces of hair it's going in the bun i think this is how you create the big bun listen i i'm not on hair tiktok so i don't i never knew that this is how they make these buns look like that i didn't know that you ha there's a big thing in there i guess i don't know what else it would be but oh my gosh that thing is massive oh, wow i feel like does that give you like a haircut Wait, what? Does that, I meant to say, does that give you a headache? I need to get some sleep. I need to go back to bed. But yeah, you get what I'm saying. A lot of hair stuff going on. And the reason why this controversy started was because, oh my God, I have to go through a lot of these. Now, 
what we are missing is that a lot of these TikToks used to have another person in them. That person being her husband. They used to make a lot of couples content. She slowly started integrating him into the videos. People loved him as like a little little side character, supporting cast member. This is like one of the ones that I found reposted with her and her husband. My husband would react if another woman flirts with him. There's like a video where she like really smacks her husband's head with with her. Oh, wait, is this it? No, there's one where she just like there was one where she smacked him in the back of the head. It was crazy. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. So I posted this video yesterday and so many of you guys are mad thinking that I intentionally disrespect my husband all day. I would never do something that my husband was not okay with. We are content creators. This is what we do. So y'all don't have to be the hero to try to save my man from me. But people were really confused when all of a sudden she posted a TikTok from her car talking about a hypothetical relationship that someone would have with their husband and doesn't say it's her, but makes a very specific situation in her TikTok. Let's hear part of what she said. He's going to be the hardworking man he is, and he's going to take care of us. Now, imagine 20 years later, he finds somebody else that's younger, more beautiful, and he leaves you. So she's talking about someone who, would, who was with her husband for a long time, found someone younger, leaves... Did this all as like a like a situation that she's trying to explain to give advice to people, but let's continue. And you don't have a job. You don't have any ways to financially support yourself. You no longer have your youth and now you're alone. That would be one of my biggest fears. And I know some of y'all are married to some great men, okay, but I wouldn't put nothing past nobody somebody might tell you today hey i love you i love you i would never ever 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 do that to you but in five years 10 years 15 years people change she explains the situation and everyone is like hey that seems oddly specific uh is anything going on with you and your husband is this about you by chance just just by any chance now i could only find the next video through this tiktok but she used the last TikTok to talk about why she will never stop working, why she'll never stop the grind, because the husband could leave you at any point, ladies, come on. And then everyone's asking, hey, is this what happened to you? Because this seems very specific. Seems like it might be a situation you're talking about. And this is how she responded. You guys, this is not my situation right now. I was just telling you the reason I will always work and why I would teach my daughter not to depend on a man financially. This has nothing to do with me. I literally brought up a scenario saying if you were married to a man for 20 years, you've never had a job, you've never had any skill sets because you thought he would take care of you for the rest of your life. And imagine if he left you for somebody else. It was a scenario. So she makes it very clear. That was not me. I'm not talking about that. I have a daughter. Basically explains that she, this is not her situation. She has a daughter with this dude, and she's like, no, that's not what happened, but this is why I'm telling my daughter never to depend on a man financially. Everybody goes to her page, and suddenly you scroll down, and all these TikToks, half of them used to be TikToks that had her husband in it. And all of a sudden, no husband in sight. He is completely gone. He is wiped. You might say he effed around <laughs> and found out. I see how that happened. Wow, that hurt a lot more than I expected. What did I do wrong? Oh yeah, that's my three-year-old, by the way. Yeah, I'm a dad. It's a whole thing. That's just nice. So everyone goes to ask her about why the husband's not there. By the way, shout out to T with Lady, who, who put these clips together. Let's see what Ashley says in response to this. All the videos of my husband have been removed from all of my platforms. And I understand that this raised a lot of concerns, especially because a lot of you guys follow us for our couple's content. But I did start this channel by myself in 2020. I've always loved being on social media, and he did not. Over time, I talked him into being on my social media, and we saw how well the video did of us together. So we just continued. But it was something that I was most definitely much more passionate about. But he no longer wants this lifestyle. So I get it if he doesn't want the lifestyle, you know, and if he's not comfortable with it anymore. 
but like there were a lot of posts with them too <laughs> and it's like you could have just stopped making the content with him seems like it was something more serious than that but i'll let her say your piece i'm not gonna i'm not gonna argue with her life now in this same video she also addressed the fact that people have noticed that she is no longer wearing her wedding ring and this is her response to that Okay, I totally forgot about this part, but yeah, the wedding ring also is gone. Let's hear what she has to say. And as far as the ring, you guys have noticed it's been off my finger for a couple weeks now, and that's just something that I want to keep private right We're going to get right back into the video in a second, but for now, let's talk about the sponsor for this video, Casetify. Guys, Casetify is the world's most popular tech accessory brand, allowing people to show their own personality through their phone case, just like I do. They have been a longtime sponsor of this channel and with products that I use literally every single day. I've got a custom case that represents the Nick is not green channel. I got this awesome case with a bunch of little gnomes hanging out. This is my awesome Casetify case that I picked out with a frog that has like a little cowboy like vibe going on. On. I love this artist and they have so many cool cases on Casetify's website. I could have picked 10 more designs that worked just right for me. Even custom cases that have my initials and have the word barf on them. How cool is that? And my favorite thing about Casetify is their commitment to sustainability. Not only are their cases 65% recycled in plant-based material, but in 2021, they collected and recycled over 51 thousand used phone cases listen and not only are all these cases stylish and sustainable but they're protective too they save your phone from up to 11.5 feet of protection and i can prove that with a drop test right now it goes from being in that snug little case bounced right off the corners everything's all good as usual and Casetify knows that these cases aren't just cases, they're canvases for artists. And Casetify knows that, which is why they created their global creative hub where they partner with artists all over the world to bring new and fun designs to you. They recently collaborated with Ketnips, which is this super cool illustrator from Britain, to make these awesome phone cases, AirPod cases, snappy leather wallets, and more with this amazing art. So if you wanna be just like me, and show off your style through your phone case or other accessories, go to casetify.com slash green is not Nick for 15% off of your order. Thank you to Casetify for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to the drama. So this is when things get a little bit messy, a little bit confusing, because all of a sudden people go to this TikTok and believe that, let me just, let me just show you. Say hi, daddy. Say hi, daddy. Hi, daddy. Whose goddamn white baby is that? This is your baby, okay? He just light skinned it. Mm hmm. And so everybody suddenly thought that the guy in the bed was with this woman, with this other baby, this other kid. And so everybody is like, okay, your husband is with another woman as you, you know, kind of low-key brought up in your explanation but now this girl's feeding a baby she's saying she's calling him the dad of the kid and i think that's because she came forward and talked about how she actually did have gel lady's husband as a client but let me back up i know this is very confusing this guy this guy right here is not actually the husband yes the girl on the right was i'm trying to figure out how to say this in a way that makes sense this girl right here this girl right here by the name of monique is a sex worker and part of her job is doing sex work by meeting up with men who hire her for whatever they may please but this man is not that man now i think because she brought it up people were like oh this guy he looks enough like the other guy they're not the same guy. She is in an open relationship with what I think she at least said is her baby daddy, but her sex work side of her life actually did intertwine with Gel Lady's wife because the guy... Does this does any of that make sense? Do I need to draw it out for you guys? So listen, here's TikTok Lady. Here's TikTok Lady's husband. Here's Monique. Here's Monique's husband. Now, Monique and her husband, they have multiple kids together. They have like few daughters or whatever gel lady and her husband i think have one kid together i think they're actually legally married they're not legally married but they are in a relationship this relationship is not open but this relationship is because of the sex work aspect of it not that the sex work 
necessarily means that it's an open relationship, but in this case it is. Gel Lady's husband decided that he wanted to talk to sex worker Monique. They talked. It was not the TikTok right here. That's this guy right here. But what Monique decides to do, which is the thing that is kind of the big controversy of all of this, is, is once she started making videos about it, you know, about her own relationship with her husband right here, I should have picked better markers. Monique came out and decided to talk about all of this to everybody, which I, at least from what I understand, is a big no-no when it comes to any sort of client worker relationship it, whether it's even a therapist or a sex worker you're talking to or whoever i'm pretty sure it stays between you two but of course gel lady didn't know about that and of course she has every right to talk about her own relationship but monique shows up to talk about what happened between her and gel lady's husband in front of everybody on the internet i've said this many a times before i'll say it again these people there's no reason any of you guys watching this video there's no reason any of you guys need to go to their pages comment on their lives send them messages their way we we exist to watch what is happening on the internet but we do not exist to go to those people and cause them more harm because at the end of the day we are only seeing this through tiktok and it is kind of uncomfortable even talking about this going on but because Monique made it so public. I think it's worth having this talk about what is and isn't okay when it comes to these kind of relationships and, and where you're crossing a boundary. And I'm going to say that Monique may have crossed a boundary here. Let's see what she says. I'm currently evacuating for a hurricane, but I do want to kind of touch on it. First, I want to say that I am not blasting this girl's business. She is quite literally blasting herself. She's quite literally blasting herself. She posted some some vague videos about things that were going on in, in her life. I, I, I guess I wouldn't say it's fully blasting, but yes, with 14 million followers, you are bound to have some people doing some detective work. And I'm not coming for her for crying on the internet because honestly, who hasn't? Because I sure as hell have. Being a mom is quite hard sometimes, but it's... And this is where things get me because it, it, if the way she kind of talks about this is very like condescending i guess like very holier than thou especially when she agreed to do this with someone who was married and once she knew that he was married she came on tiktok and basically said it was okay for her to do all of this and then just like throw out all this information about their relationship that wasn't necessary uh, I'll, I'll hear I'll let you guys listen to how she talks about giving advice as like a mother to this woman who has been cheated on by her husband But it's also the biggest blessing of your life And I'm not about to see this girl do it all alone over something that she thinks is bigger than what it is So she makes the claim here that gel lady thinks that this situation is way bigger than it is You are making a mountain out of a molehill with this situation with your husband coming to see me as a sex worker And basically says I don't want her to do it alone Just because of something that she thinks is bigger than it is as if she's like helping her as if she's saying like You don't need to do this alone. Nothing bad actually happened But of course you went behind her back and paid someone to talk about the things going on in his life when his wife and kid were at home that's my opinion i don't know what else is going on in their home i don't know what side of the story he gave her what he has said or not and if she doesn't want to reach out that's fine i'm not the kind of woman that says don't come at me as a woman if you have a question feel free to ask and i will decide if i want to answer or not now while the first time she came at me was not crazy and i did respect it I did get a little eh when I started seeing things like, I'm going to raise my daughter to be da 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 Okay, hold on. But right now, currently in the story, she says, the first time she came after me, which is maybe, I think she may be talking about the original TikTok that the gel lady made, which I don't really consider that coming at her, but maybe she's talking about an actual conversation they had. When all I have is daughters. And then she brings up how she disagrees with some of the ways that the gel lady is raising her daughter. This is like one of the most confusing stories I feel like I've told. You guys are going to need to do some work to clear this up in the comments because there are, there's so much going on, but she is criticizing. I did get a little eh when I started seeing things like, I'm going to raise my daughter to be da 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 when all I have is daughters. And I posted that video because when she gave that scenario of a man taking care of his family and then leaving, it was very relatable for me. 
So she says it's very relatable for me, while at the same time trying to downplay the same thing happening to the gel lady that her husband, who she had a child with, who she's known for 20 years or whatever, leaving her to go talk to a woman who's younger than her. And she's like, that hits home for me. That really hits home for me. And she was also saying that she was questioning the ethics of the gel woman bringing up how she wants to raise her daughters to not have to rely on a man and this and that. And I think Monique here took that as a personal insult when she was obviously, this is just directed at her husband. Monique has nothing to do with what gel lady actually said in her TikToks. Like it is so disconnected, but instead she comes on here and has a very, I don't know, she's like putting herself up on this high horse thinking that she's like, I don't know, there's some moral fucking compass for, for Gel Lady to follow. My man didn't leave me, but he does take care of his family. So that hits close to home, except your, your man didn't leave you, and he stays and raises the family or whatever. So does it hit close to home or not? And then of course you have the kids show up in the middle of it. So all of a sudden, Ashley didn't want her business out like that and didn't want to officially say that anything happened. She kept it private, but then Monique comes out and outs herself. Fair views. There's so many other people explaining this drama probably better than I am, but I've been watching, been looking at it all morning, but it's so hard to like lay out in order. I need to be better at my job. I really do. So she brings the kid out, which is just a wild move. Look at this. Hey, mama. <laughs> Take your kid's face off the internet. I, I, you don't need to be doing that. What, what's going on? First of all, I want to make it very clear we did not meet up in person. Second of all, even though there was communication, um, I think there was a reason. I don't feel like this man is heard, and now I feel like he's being slightly bashed on the internet. And she might not be wrong for this. She might have a whole different image of what's going on. I'm not saying what he did is right. Everybody has different morals. But in my eyes, I saw it as something else that she probably doesn't see it as. This is like such an awful way to talk down to her about her own marriage. I think she's saying that she never actually met up with her husband. So maybe she just caught him messaging her. I don't know. But she's trying to explain how he doesn't feel heard. And I'm sure you don't feel heard either. But I think, you know, I see this a lot different than you do. I, you know, I understand your husband, unlike you. What I saw was a man who was not heard and he wanted to be heard and understood. He did mention multiple times that he did try to communicate these things, but obviously they weren't heard if I see that it's still going on. He didn't have to say that. You're not his therapist. You don't like get to get to dive in and be like, he explained to me that like on multiple situations, she didn't feel heard about these things. And you know, from my perspective, like, dude, you weren't asked for an analysis of the goddamn family tree. We don't need your input on this. It has nothing to do with anything that's going on. She can, again, she can continue to do her job. She can continue to talk to men who are in relationships secretly behind their back. And of course, I'm putting so much of that blame on the husband. Of course, he was the one that reached out. He was the point of contact, but she knows that he's in a relationship. She knows that he was hiding it from his wife. There was also many comments that would say the things that he was feeling because it was just very obvious. And while it did make the content good for y'all, if it feels emotionally or mentally exhausting for somebody, I would try to hear that out because that might lead to other things that you don't want. What is... So she's basically giving them advice to give a little bit of space on, on making the couple's content because apparently he's a little bit stressed out about... None of this should be talked about by anyone on the internet at all none of this should be public we shouldn't be hearing about this he shouldn't be blasting this on the internet and of course the story is like a massive thing now on tiktok i am not this is not some like niche drama we're talking about here i'm not breaking the story but man i think things would have been fine they would have kept going if you didn't say anything and she could have kept doing her job and fixed it and worked it out with him but instead now we have you know licensed therapist over here giving advice on this couple's relationship that they never asked for. No one ever asked for this. 
After hearing this video, would it be worth twirling your whole family if he never did what you felt like in that scenario, leaving or cheating on you? My opinion, if he was lacking in other areas of the home and didn't want to make content, okay, then what the hell? But if he is there for the children, if he is there for you, then if this is something you find enjoyable, and even if it's not enjoyable for you, but if it's something you're good at, I understand he's your partner, but notice dude stop with the yapping she really has to hit the full three minute mark so she can get all that watch time so what i'm gathering from this is that when gel girl was talking about her relationship and she was talking about this hypothetical situation she was equating it to the way it really felt for her husband to talk to this girl behind her back he didn't actually go out nothing actually happened they didn't meet up in person well when i say nothing actually happened i don't mean the actual conversations that they had online that did happen and i think ashley put those videos up initially without the thought that everyone was going to start speculating and that this girl was going to come out about it and that all of this was going to happen because she didn't actually convey any of that stuff actually happening she actually specifically said that that was not her situation but now we're at the point where we're bringing up all of these secret things that have nothing to do with any of this because monique over here wanted to have some face time on the cameras i want her to know her man loves her he made that very known what's with what was with the little heart the half heart at the end this is like that girl in the he said us video who did the weird thing with the guy you can check and she like flips off the camera at the end oh yeah and this one's for the haters <laughs> Good. stop 28 28 so she makes that video here you know it gets four million views and then she keeps going like she keeps posting about what it what is with you she didn't ask questions you're not asking questions but both of y'all are coming at me with assumptions. Dude, your kid is in the car. Cut it out. We should not be talking about this anymore. I'm done. I, I'm sure there's more videos of her making herself a part of this situation. But obviously, my advice about this whole thing is that people leave everyone alone. Go back to doing what you're doing. Stop causing more people to put in their own input on something that they're not about i guess technically i'm putting in input on something that i'm not about but you know i'm trying to figure out the best way to respect this poor woman's life when everyone is deciding to speak for her at this point but the best i can do is urge you guys to also be respectful to people online and to stay back when you see stuff like this you can you know watch and engage with the content and the drama the internet is built off of the connections that these people make online and the way that we interact with each other and the impact that it has on the entire culture of of the internet and what we are a part of i guess that's just like a complicated way of saying that's the drama i hope you guys feel like i filled you in i know this one was a messy story it's really hard to figure out exactly where it's going but either way thank you for watching if you want to see more drama on my page i just posted a video on monday you can check out it's pretty spicy drama a lot of relationship stuff this week. I'll put some playlists on the screen of some other drama videos I've made. You can check out the new Queef Jerky video. I'll put it right here on the screen. He Said Us has been making a lot of moves. But yeah, thank you all for all the support you guys have given me on this channel and all the other stuff that I've been putting out lately. I'm very excited to release even more stuff in about two weeks. I'm putting out a song and a music video that I made for a solo project September 15th. So I'm excited to start talking about that a little bit more. But yeah, that's it. Thanks guys for watching. Let me know what you thought in the comments down below and I will talk to you very soon.